Welcome back to 504 Road Trips. Today we're going to be doing an oil change on the 2020 Honda Civic Si. Uh, we're getting ready to go on a multi-thousand mile road trip and uh, when I bought this car I committed to changing the oil every 5,000 miles. Uh, this car has gasoline direct injection or GDI and there have been known problems with these cars with gasoline getting into the crankcase and so it's a good idea to change the oil a little more frequently and uh, basically check to see if there's a smell of gasoline when you drain the old oil out. So. Uh, the car's got 4,500 miles on it right now. I don't want to go on this trip without changing the oil first, so we're going to do that today, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So first, the tools necessary to complete this job. We have this oil pan here to drain the old oil into. You're going to need a short screwdriver like this, Phillips, uh, the bigger the better, if you can, use a number three. That's to take the pan off from under the engine. Uh, you know, that protects the underside of the whole engine. You need a 17 millimeter socket. A funnel to uh, get the oil into the car. Might need one of these. This is an oil filter strap wrench. Uh, more than likely I'll be able to get it off with my hand because it's a very small filter. Zero W20 full synthetic motor oil and an oil filter. This is the Napa brand oil filter which is actually made by Wix. And finally a set of ramps like this to get the car off the ground because this car only has about five inches of ground clearance in the front. So as you can see, when we have the ramp positioned here, we've got about a quarter inch of clearance. These are low profile ramps. Uh, they come from Harbor Freight. Uh, they cost, I don't know, $11, $7, something like that. Uh, actually, a friend of mine loaned these to me and he owed me some money and uh, he just bought another set and told me to keep them. These ramps do have a built-in lip here which acts as a chalk to keep the car from rolling off on off of the ramp. Just make sure that the ramps are pointed in line with the wheels, you know, not splayed outward or anything like that so that when the car rolls up onto them, the center of the tire will land right here. Once you have the car up on the ramp, it's a good idea to chalk the back wheels. I don't have any chocks, but that'll work. Additionally, you want to set the parking brake, which in this car is just a switch like that. It doesn't have the satisfying ratcheting sound you get from a handbrake. And put the car in the lowest gear, which is reverse. Or park if you have an automatic. So this is what the underside of the car looks like and one of the things that I forgot is you're also going to need a standard flat blade screwdriver. Uh, the way this is designed is there's a screw here that's a Phillips and this is actually a screw with threads. And then these things here, which you really need a wide blade flat screwdriver. The problem is, is the only one that I have has a handle that's about a foot long. So, whoops. So it doesn't fit between this pan and the ground. So I'm using this. Now these are not plastic screws. These are metal. They're not actually screws. You rotate them 45 degrees and they come out. Uh, 90 degrees and they come out. 
so it's just a matter of twisting them. thread so it requires a lot of turns. So we got two of these Phillips screws and five of these things and I think that's it. So this just slides back and it should just drop out. Oh wait no, we have a sixth one of these. And this just slides out. So now the underside of the engine is exposed and that's the oil drain plug and the filter is right there. So they're in pretty close proximity to each other. Of course not quite close enough to be able to leave the drain pan in one place but they're pretty close. So we're going to take the drain plug out and drain the oil now. So it's always a good idea to remove the oil filler cap before you drain the oil just to let air into the system so that um, so that the oil can flow out of the bottom without gurgling. Now I'm going to get my drain pan into position, which the oil plug is here. Uh, the oil is going to flow that way because it's sideways. and. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen it first because I need the room. And I should be able to just take it out by hand now. Yeah. I always have a uh, rag handy. Because there's really no way to do this without getting oil all over your hand. But what I do is I kind of push in on the plug until I feel the threading jump. And it's draining into my hand. That was pretty minimal. So... This oil plug's like brand new, there's really no need to replace it. It's got a metal gasket. Um, so I'm just gonna wipe it off and that's gonna go back in there when it's finished draining. The oil that's coming out is pretty black considering that it's got only 3,500 miles on it. What I did when I bought this car was I changed the oil at 1,000 miles and then this is going to be the 5,000 mile oil change, although it only has 4,500 on it. And the next oil change will be at 10,000 and 15,000 every 5,000 after that. I'm not smelling any gasoline, which is a good thing. Because, uh, whoa, one of the problems, oh man, the wind's blowing. One of the problems with these cars, with the GDI, is that... The, uh, that gasoline tends to get into the crankcase and so you'll end up with um, you'll end up with gasoline in your oil and if that happens you need to bring it in for warranty service because something's wrong and it's a problem that Honda claims to have gotten rid of by 2020 but there still are reports of that happening occasionally all right, so the oil is just about drained out. And when it stops dripping, I'm going to put the plug back in, and then we're going to go to the filter.
also when you put the oil plug back in there is a specific torque you're supposed to set it to but you don't want to over tighten it you sure don't want it to be loose so it's just something you kind of develop a feel for over the years I've never ruined an oil plug or the threading uh, on any vehicle and I've never had a leak from the oil plug so uh, if you want to be perfect look up the torque specs for the oil plug and get you a torque wrench and do it exact now the oil filter hopefully will just come right out but my hands are all covered with oil so it probably won't no, I can't get a grip on it so I'm probably gonna have to use the dreaded oil filter wrench oh wait no I gotta turn it now getting this out without making a mess is nearly impossible this one's pretty accessible but well actually that's not bad it's almost like they have this designed to channel the oil straight down but the trick is to get an oil filter unscrewed and not dropping it so you gotta kinda keep your hand under it and just rotate it with your fingers and <laughs> That's exactly what I did not want to do. So now I got oil all over me. And oil all over the underside of this. So I got to clean all that up. Damn it. also a good idea to have some oil dry or some cat litter around just to soak up any oil that ends up on the ground especially if you're working in a garage you don't want oil stains on your garage floor Fortunately, there's just this little lip right here, and I think that's where all the oil went because it kind of leans backwards, so there's really no place else for it to go. Just wipe this whole thing down while I'm doing this. Now, I'm going to get a fresh towel because you got to wipe down the mating surface where the oil filter gasket mates with the engine so I'm gonna get a fresh towel because I've been wiping up the ground and all kind of stuff with this so with a clean towel I'm gonna wipe off the threading and the mating surface and one thing this isn't as much of an issue on newer cars with modern oil filters but always look at that mating surface and make sure you're seeing metal up there uh, it is possible for the oil filter gasket to break free from the oil filter and stick to that. And if you put a new filter on there with the old gasket on there, you end up with a double gasket. And the double gasket will not seal. And once oil pressure builds, it will blow all of your oil out from between the two gaskets. And potentially destroy your engine. So always check that before you put the new filter on so before you put the new filter on you gotta prep the filter by oiling the gasket and what you do is open up your new bottle of oil dip a finger in it and just rub it around the gasket just to get some oil on it you don't want a dry gasket going up against the engine and then it's just a matter of screwing it on don't cross thread it 
should spin free like that. And you turn it until it touches and give it another half turn. And that's all there is to it. You don't have to tor you don't have to tighten that down real tight. You don't want to crush that gasket or the leak. Uh, and you want to be able to get it off next time. So now we got the oil filter back in, we got the plug back in. <clears throat> all we have left to do down here. Well, we're going to add the new oil first because we want to be able to check this for leaks. And if we put that pan back on, we're not going to be able to tell if the thing's leaking. So let's fill it up with oil. So I'm going to use a funnel just to make it easy. Some people don't use funnels, but I'd rather use a funnel and have it take longer than have to clean up oil from all up in this area here. So the oil capacity of this car is 3.7 quarts with the filter, and this is a 5 quart bottle. So I'm going to look at this little gauge on the side here, and I basically need to pour until it's about here left in the bottle. And that's about right, right there. So we're going to assume that's correct, and uh, we'll check it once we get it back on level ground. And if that is correct, then every fourth oil filter, or oil change, you don't have to buy oil because right now. I've actually got three bottles of oil like that with a quart left in them. Because uh, the old Civic had the exact same setup. Now I'm checking for leaks before I start the car. And there's no oil coming out there. There's no oil running down the filter. The filter's clean. So I'm going to start the engine up and we're going to let it run for a couple minutes, make sure we got oil pressure, and see if oil comes squirting out anywhere. So while we're warming up the car, we're going to reset the oil life for the engine computer, just so it knows when the oil was changed last. Um, like I said before, the uh, I'm not waiting for this thing to tell me to change the oil. But to do that, you hit the info button on the steering wheel and scroll to the wrench and saying oil life is 60%. Well, oil life is now 100%, so we're gonna get rid of that by pressing and holding this enter button here in the middle, and you hold that for 10 seconds. And th this will work on any 2016 to 2020 Civic. The 2015s and earlier were different, but this system was the same in 2016 to 2020. Now from here, uh, you can scroll up and down using this little d-pad thing here and so we're going to scroll down to all do items no we're not actually well no that worked okay uh, yeah because there was actually nothing due uh, but that did reset the oil life to a hundred percent So now we have oil pressure and the engine's warming up a little bit and there's still no sign of leaks. So I think we're good as far as the leaks go. So I'm gonna shut the car off. I'm gonna put the pan back on under here and get it off the ramps and then we'll double check to make sure we got enough oil in the crankcase. So replacing this pan is the exact opposite of taking it off. 
basically, this is just a thin aluminum pan. There's a notch right here. There's a notch on the opposite side. You just have to get it lined up on those two. There's also two at the rear. And there's holes in here where you can kind of grab a hold of it. Just don't pull too hard because they're kind of sharp. And you just got to get all four of these things lined up and hooked in. Like that. And we got the six fasteners. And the two screws to put back in. So I'm going to start with the middle ones here, since this is sagging a bit. And when they go in, the slot is lined up like this. And when you lock them, the slot's going to be turned sideways. This is a bit more trouble than it should be. Oh, and here's the problem. The front lip of this thing has to be under... I don't know if you can see this, but the way I have this here is wrong. This has to be on top of this. So, I gotta undo what I just did and try again. Okay, and that actually made it much, much easier to line everything up. Remember that when you're putting these back in, the slot lines up with the car front to back. This one still don't want to go in though. I don't know why. Oh, come on, man. Well, that one, when I put it in, I had to line it up sideways. So they're not all the same. So there is no rule of thumb as to which way to line these up. These go in sideways and twist to where the, when they're locked, they're lined up front to back. It's just the ones in the rear that work the other way. So that was much harder than it should have been. And we're going to put these in. And that's it, we're done. Now we just gotta get the car off the ramps, get it on level ground, and check the oil.
So now we're going to pull a dipstick and it's really hard to read these modern dipsticks but it looks like it's right at the mark in between the two holes I'm going to dip it one more time now that it's wiped off sorry this is hard to do while I'm holding the camera These things are pretty useless. I'm going to add just a little bit more oil just to be safe. I'm not going to put like another quart in, but I'm just going to bring it up a little bit because it looks like it's a little low on that dipstick. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So that's how you change the oil in the 2020 Civic Si. Now, this is the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. However, any Civic, uh, this is identical to the procedure for my old 2015 Civic with the 2.0 and um, pretty much any modern Honda it should be the same so uh, even if you have a different year uh, can't speak for the 21s but uh, like 2015 to 2020 this should be your oil change procedure for your Civic thanks for watching uh, if you'd like to comment on this video, please leave a comment below. Give us a thumbs up. Um, be sure and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and hit that bell icon to be notified when our new videos come out. And be sure to join us for our next 504 road trip.